So our story begins with Vegeta on the ground watching a fast moving warrior moving at instantaneous speed, practicing his training. We soon find out that this is none other than Goku in his mastered Ultra Instinct form saying as he moves around, How's this for speed Vegeta? Still think your Ultra Ego could match this? While Vegeta watches down from below responding, <laughs> This is what you call fast? I'm in base and I can still see your movements. Stop playing around, Beerus is watching you know. Referring to the God of Destruction who is indeed laying down slothfully nearby with a smile thinking in his head. Hmm, this Saiyan really has come a long way. These movements are near perfect in his Ultra Instinct. It reminds me of a younger Whis. Vegeta, meanwhile still watching with his arms folded, grows visibly impatient and looks over at Beerus and says, What's with the smile? Don't tell me you're actually impressed with this clown. Even Yamcha could use super speed. He's hogging the limelight as usual. Once he's down, I'll show you real speed. But realizing Beerus is still ignoring him, Vegeta becomes annoyed. You're supposed to be my master, you goddamn cat! Yet you haven't taught me a thing since I reached this new form! Some teacher you are, Beerus. I bet the only reason you've stopped is so I don't surpass you. <laughs> he then looks to the sky at Goku and yells, Hey Kakarot! Time's up! Come down and let me show you the results of my training. If you can even call it that. <laughs> Why you? Meanwhile, a Beerus who finally snaps from Vegeta's comments, then responds, So, you think I've been slacking with my training, do you? And for the reason of having you somehow surpass me? Ha! <laughs> Don't make me laugh, Vegeta. You're no more of a threat to me than your own father was. Beerus, now finally getting up from his lazily state, then gets to his feet and with a sinister smirk says, Fine. I was starting to get pins and needles from laying down so much anyway. I could use a warm up. Forget this pointless training exercise. The real training starts now. Courtesy of your friendly neighborhood god of destruction. Bring that other saying down. It's time I reassert just how much of a difference there still is between us. Vegeta now with a slight sweat drop down his face from the intimidating request, then immediately calls down Goku saying, Kakarot, come down. Plans have changed. Beerus wants to personally train us. And for some reason, that includes you too. Huh? Beerus wants to train us? Would that be considering cheating on Whis? Hmm, this is pretty odd. He's never offered that before. Wasn't he sleeping? He looks down from above and then notices that Beerus has indeed woken up and to his feet and says, Oh wow, Vegeta wasn't kidding. I haven't seen Beerus this fired up since we fought on Earth. But after thinking that, another thought instantly comes to Goku's mind. Hey! Wait a second. Maybe he wants a rematch. I almost had him before. Maybe... Maybe I could beat him now with Ultra Instinct. <laughs> and as he says this, Goku then swiftly flies back down towards Vegeta. With an enthusiastic look on his face, Goku then looks on at Beerus and questions further. So, what did you want to do Beerus? Training wouldn't make much sense now that me and Vegeta have gone down different paths. Unless, you know Ultra Instinct too. My guess is you want to fight one of us. If that's the case, I'm going first. To which Vegeta then butts in. <laughs> in your dreams Kakarot. Number one, you already had your shot at him and failed. And number two, I've just spent the last half hour standing around watching you fly about like a headless chicken. It's my turn this time. Come Beerus! 
But Beerus, slightly angered by their presumptuous arrogance, then just responds, Ha! You two Saiyans really have gotten too big for your boots. Neither one of you could even hold a candle next to me as you are. I'm not interested in fighting either of you. But who I am interested in is fighting that Saiyan who defeated the one called Broly. Whis tells me his power could actually pose me a challenge. And I'm told he's a fusion of you two fools. So go ahead and do your silly dance. I'm waiting. <gasps> no! Whoa! Awesome idea! As the two become shocked in different ways, reacting totally different with Vegeta continuing, You... you can't be serious! Why not just fight us both at the same time? I'm not joining with that clown again! I promised myself! While Goku continues, Damn Beerus! You must be insanely strong if you think you could handle Gogeta. This will be awesome. Imagine Ultra Ego and Ultra Instinct combined. To which Beerus then smiles and replies, <laughs> Yes, imagine that. I should say this offer for training has a time limit. You have five minutes to turn into this Gogeta before I go back to sleep. Hurry now, time is ticking. Making Goku hastily call out to the angry Vegeta saying, Alright, you heard him Vegeta, let's start the dance. I can be on the left and you can be on the right. Which is instantly shut down by Vegeta who responds, Forget it Kakarot, I'm a man of my word. There's no way in hell I'm joining with you for something like this. To save the world, sure. But for training? <laughs> I prefer training by myself anyway. But Goku now pleading with a beaming smile says, Please Vegeta, just one more time. I promise next time we fight a bad guy, we won't even need to fuse. Now that you have your ultra ego. One last time. <laughs> you say that every time you clown. <laughs> Fine, I'll do this only so I can see that damn Beerus beaten. And with that, Vegeta then closes his eyes and slowly then transforms into his ultra ego state, now covered in a mysterious dark flame, while Goku with a smile remarks, That's the way, thanks Vegeta, I owe you one. While Beerus says, Interesting. So they finally come to an agreement. And following this, Goku and Vegeta immediately begin the famous fusion dance of the Metamorans, yelling in unison, Fusion! Ha! Perfectly placing the tips of their fingers together as Ultra Ego Vegeta and Ultra Instinct Goku then become enveloped in a bright light. And just like that, Ultra Gogeta is born. Now with white hair surrounded by purple and a mysterious purple aura covered in floating white orbs. As the newly produced Saiyan lets out, <laughs> Let's get this started then Beerus. I haven't got long. Wasting no time, Gogeta then ducks down into fighting stars continuing, you can't imagine just how long I've been waiting for this day, Beerus. We never fused when you first came to Earth. And things might have turned out completely different if we did. But now, we'll put that idea to rest. Prepare yourself for the strongest Saiyan in the universe. Gogeta! While Beerus just looks on completely unbothered with a cold gaze as he replies, <laughs> turned out different? Quit blabbering your nonsense and fight me. Did you not just say you haven't got much time? Do not disappoint me, mortal. Oh, I won't. <laughs> and in an instant, with speed never before seen, Gogeta is immediately there, kicking a Beerus who could just about react, 
wincing in pain even as he blocks. As he gets pushed back and recovers himself, Gogeta is still right in his face with a smile, goading him on saying, huh, Don't tell me that little kick hurt you Lord Beerus. Would be a bit embarrassing for your two students to show you up like that don't you think? Which immediately triggers an anger Beerus as he begins, you two have definitely forgot who you're talking to. I guess it's time you two brats learn the meaning of being her kind. Come here and... <laughs> but before he can even finish what he wanted to say, the insane speed of Ultra Ego Instinct Gogeta comes through again, as a straight right hook is thrown and landed right on the god's face. With yet again Gogeta provoking Beerus with a smile saying, So, you told me to come here. I'm here. Now what did you want to say, little kitty cat? You disappoint me of how easy this is. Huh. Don't think you'll be training me anytime soon. More the other way. <laughs> this insolence. You two will pay. Who? you think you're talking to? Huh? With a sudden increase in speed, Beerus in retaliation immediately grabs onto the wrist of Gogeta saying, You got too cocky saying, Landing a few weak hits on me doesn't win you a fight against a deity. Now, your end has come. It's time you found out why they call me the strongest god of destruction in history! Huh? Beerus, what's happening? This pressure is overwhelming! As Gogeta looks on stunned at a visibly powering up Beerus, who seemingly is getting stronger only through sheer anger. With speed and with fear for his life, Gogeta immediately flies back after Beerus lets go. Trembling in fear as he mutters, no way! Since when did Beerus have this much power? Was he always holding back? So, this is the strength of a true god of destruction! And standing there, now covered in purple black lightning, in what we can only assume is Beerus's full power, Beerus smirks and proclaims, Now, let the real fight begin! Show me what the combined power of the saints trained by both gods and angels is all about. Be honored to be only the second since Kitella to see this fall. And with that being said, Gogeta gets serious, getting into stance without a smile this time as he thinks to himself, Beerus, just when will we be able to surpass you? I have to finish this. And finish this now! One final attack! Let's go! <laughs> and immediately Ultra Gogeta then sets off at full power, powering in his hand a vicious fist of ki, while on the opposite end, a still smiling Beerus powers to a massive ball of her Kai energy within his fist also, ready to equal Ultra Gogeta and then some as he says one final time, yes, finally, the challenge I've been waiting for all these years, finally, my time has come, <laughs> and just like that, as the two rush towards each other at full speed, without care for the environment, the incredible powers clash fist first. Doing aftermath, of course, creates an enormous explosion. One so large, it can be seen from the planet's orbit. But instantly, just as the collision takes place, the power unleashed by Ultra Gogeta proves too much, and Goku and Vegeta immediately defuse. <coughs> huh? What the? Leaving Beerus confused in the process. Goku and Vegeta, meanwhile, are left awkwardly looking on as Goku mumbles, Oh yeah, I forgot to mention the stronger we are and the more power we use, 
the less time we have as Gogeta. Guess we'll have to try that one again, Lord Beerus. Sorry. Well, Vegeta just adds, I'm not doing this again, clown! With Beerus just left completely unsatisfied and annoyed by the two, having been robbed of his once-in-a-lifetime chance to have the challenge he'd always crave. Yelling, Why you two? Hakai! So our story begins after an angry Beerus has just witnessed Ultra Gogeta defuse just before he got to taste his first challenge in centuries. Looking on at a paralyzed in fear, Goku and Vegeta saying, How dare you two fools steal my one and only chance at fighting a warrior on my level. If you two can't even entertain me for more than a few minutes, then what use are you? Say goodbye to this realm, mortals. Prepare to be Hakai! Huh? What? No! Beerus, you can't be serious! As Goku adds, Wait a minute, there's gotta be something we can do! Please, Beerus, kill the clown! It was his idea! I didn't even want to be part of this! As Goku says, Wait, Beerus, we can fuse again to... to someone even more powerful! Huh? Immediately piquing the interest of Beerus, who stands still, just holding a floating ball of menacing Hakai in the air. Continuing... Stronger than your Gogeta, you say? Whis never informed me of this. What an interesting turn of events. This better not be a lie. Or the Earth will vanish with you two morons too! Got it? Leading to Goku quickly panicking and immediately saying, Don't worry Beerus, you can be sure I'm not lying. There's another way for me and Vegeta to fuse. The way gods fuse. Using the Potara. When we do that, we become Vegito. And he's way stronger than Gogeta. Honestly, I think he'll give you a real run for your money. I promise! All the while leaving Vegeta looking on awkwardly as he thinks, What is this clown saying? He knows just as well as I do. Fusion Dance or Patara, our few states have more or less the exact same power level. We probably would have even less time as Vegito than Gogeta! <laughs> but Goku's lies actually penetrate and convince Beerus as instantly the ball of Hakai in his fingertip dissipates as he says, Hmm, the Potara, of course. Isn't that what the Supreme Kai used to fuse with Kobito? Interesting. I do believe Whis told me that Vegito fellow made Mizumasu look like child's play also. That should do. Now fuse at once. My patience is wearing thin, boys. With Beerus having seemingly been appeased, Goku then lets out a big sigh of relief. Phew, that was a close one. I knew you'd listen to reason, Beerus, before regaining his composure once more and saying, So, all we need now is a pair of those earrings. Like you said, Supreme Kai probably has some. Then all we need to do is each put one on. Right, Vegeta? In your dreams, Kakarot! It was humiliating enough to have fused a few once already today! You specifically said that would be the last time! How dare you think I would fuse of you again! You're out of your mind, and nothing you could say will ever sway my decision, you clown! <laughs> oh, really? Nothing he could say? Well, what about what I can say, my dear prince? Instantly triggering Beerus to repower up his ball of Hakai to threaten Vegeta with his imminent erasure. Leading, of course, to Vegeta to comedically change his tune, saying, Ugh, I mean, on second thought, I guess it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. That was good training, after all. It's... It's helping me understand my ultra ego more! Yes, that's it. K 
Kakarot! Fetch those earrings at once! I would love to fuse with you! As Goku pops up with a cheeky smile saying, <laughs> No problem, Vegeta. One Vegito coming right up for you, Beerus. But not soon after, Goku then folds his arms as a conundrum eventually reaches his mind and he lets out, Hmm, but there's just one catch, Beerus. The Potara Earring Fusion has a time limit too, and it might just be like what was with Gogeta. So, can we skip to our final attacks and just end it there? Leaving a bemused Vegeta to think, This, this fool is actually telling him the truth now? Beerus is looking for a real fight, not a brief skirmish. I don't know how he'll react to this, Kakarot! <coughs> and just as Vegeta feared, Beerus looks far from impressed, with a scowl on his face seemingly meaning the end of Earth, before yelling, That! That is no excuse! You will give me the battle I desire, whether those earrings allow it or not. Whis! Come here at once! Instantly yelling at the top of his voice for his angel attendant, who was previously nowhere to be seen. And just like that, the angel Whis appears beside Beerus, calmly inquiring, You called, my lord? What can I help you with? Need more pudding? To which Beerus seriously responds, No, Whis. The pudding can wait till later. For now, I have a much more urgent matter. I wish to battle the fusion of these two Saiyans. I want to fight the Vegito that fought Zamasu. Unfortunately, from what I can tell, the current version of the Patara earrings the Supreme Kai's use can only last a finite amount of time. What can you do for these two so that their fusion lasts longer? I need a day at least to pound them to dust. Upon hearing this request, Whis immediately raises his staff with a smile and says, I see, my lord. An easy enough task. One set of angel grade Potara earrings on its way. And with a flash of his staff, two mysterious earrings are zapped into existence. Before then being shot straight towards the Saiyans, each one immediately grabbing onto their respective new earrings. These are... Patara? Why are they black and not green? Damn you, Whis! Is there anything you can't do? Wow! So these will really keep us fused for at least a day, huh? No matter how strong we get, this is gonna be awesome! You're excited too, right, Vegeta? To which Vegeta remains silent and thinks... <laughs> Again! I have to become one with this idiot again! This is a violation of my body and soul! What have I been reduced to? And just how long will I be stuck with him this time? Five minutes was enough agony, but a whole day? Someone take me out of this nightmare! But with their worries out the window and realization that they have no other choice, Goku and Vegeta then stare into each other knowing what they must do next, with Goku saying, All right, same as before. I'll go into Ultra Instinct, and you go into Ultra Ego. Let's do this, Vegeta. With the prince just gripping back, <laughs> Yes, I know! Just get on with it now, fool! And just like that, Goku enters his mastered Ultra Instinct form, while Vegeta enters his new Ultra Ego state. Goku places the Angel of Watara on his left ear while Vegeta places it on his right. While thinking, Damn it! Here comes the annoying part! I'll never get used to this! Whoa! Damn it! And immediately both Saiyans are flung at breakneck speed to each other, face first, before finally leaving us with Vegeta. Now with a mix of Ultra Ego and Ultra Instinct Aura with white hair surrounded by purple. The cocky Saiyan then says, 
<laughs> well, it's been a while since I was let out of the bag. Good to see I have some upgrades. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Ultra Vegito. So Beerus, wanna carry on where my inferior version Gogeta left off? I'll warn you now. I take more after Vegeta, so don't expect me to hold back, kitty cat. To which Beerus just looks back, seemingly unfazed, saying, <laughs> Well, I hear that just from your tone. Unlike with Vegeta though, I hope you can back up those big words. Disappoint me again, and this battle will be your last, Saiyan. <laughs> well then. I better get a start on impressing you then, shouldn't I, Beerus? Immediately launching at Beerus at full speed, eager to prove himself. <laughs> Instantly slamming his fist through the gut of Beerus, who can do nothing but react in pain. <laughs> you hit harder now. Looks like Goku wasn't kidding. But a smiling Ultra Vegeta responds. Ha! <laughs> Actually, my power is no different to Gogeta's. Just the trick he told you to save our hides. All I'm doing is just fighting at full power this time from out of the gate. Whether I've got a day or not in this form, I'm ending this battle now, Beerus. <laughs> then placing his hand right in front of Beerus' face and blasting a mysterious attack. Huh? What is... But the attack is nothing more than Ultra Vegeta using his insane power to push Beerus back to gain some distance. Before then flying away and turning a U-turn to gain some much needed momentum. Before unleashing a flurry of attacks at Beerus as the God of Destruction does nothing but defend himself and let out... You're a lot more fidgety than the last one, aren't you? All offense, but without a hint of defense. That would be your downfall, fool! <laughs> Who needs defense when you can't even find an opening to attack back? <laughs> Launching then at Beerus, Vegito's signature plasma blade that just barely misses Beerus, who dodges by the skin of his teeth. Almost got you there, kitty! Beerus, now sensing the patronizing tone and lack of respect from Vegito, then grimaces as he says, You cocky brat! Somehow, you've managed to enrage me even more than those two combined. Looks like this form combined not only your powers, but the worst of your personality traits too. <laughs> Fine! If it's an all-out battle you desire, I'll skip the warm-up too. Behold, the full power of a god of destruction! <laughs> As the ground begins to shake from the huge increase in power from Lord Beerus. <laughs> Immediately, then as if in sync, Ultra Vegito and Beerus both then rush in at each other with rage, with Vegito yelling, Come on then, show me why you rule Universe 7, Beerus! While Beerus yells back, Gladly! <laughs> Ferociously, both powerhouse punches then clash together, almost exactly equal in strength. Much to the surprise of Vegito, who comments, Huh? So he's trying now. But. But it's not as strong as I thought it would be. I can win this! Immediately though, a massive explosion follows their collision, surprising both as they are each sent flying, calling the aftermath. <sighs> Guess we went a bit overboard. Huh? He... he managed to keep up with me. Impossible! Simultaneously, both are sent then crash landing into nearby mountains on opposite sides of the battlefield. 
but just as quickly they spring back forth right towards each other. Vegito, however, looks more damaged of the two, which doesn't go unnoticed by Beerus, who thinks, <laughs> he's strong, but he can't keep this up. The winner of this battle has already been this side. <laughs> Silly. From one area to another, a battle ensues as the two move at super speed, with each clash shaking the plane itself. However, eventually Beerus escapes the skirmish and finds himself situated in the air, and before long, powers up a massive ball of Hakan, enough to destroy the entire planet many times over, as he looks down at Vegeta with a smirk and remarks, Well, Saiyan, this was fun. But it seems in the end you were no challenge to me. I'll spare the earth, but I'm afraid you die today to the power of Hakai for your crimes of disappointing me. <laughs> Ego or instinct, it all proves meaningless to the power of a god! <laughs> and with that, Beerus mercilessly launches his powered up attack straight at Ultra Vegeta. He stands before it bravely, just observing and strangely silent, before placing his hands into a familiar position and saying, This, this is it. Go big or go home. Kame! Kame! But in a short turn of events, just as the ball of Hakai reaches his face, Ultra Vegito instant transmissions away, and finds himself now point blank in the face of a shocked Beerus, who can only mutter, huh? How did you get up here like that? But before he can ponder any more, Final Kamehameha! his most powerful attack instantly in the face of the completely unprepared God of Destruction and for devastating effect. We stand below who witnessed the entire event take place but was unable to interfere, remarked silently. I knew this wasn't a good idea. Goodbye, Beerus Sama. Moments later, the scene then shifts to the land of the Kais, where we see Kabito yell out to Shin, My lord, your tea will be ready soon. Would you like it to be brought out to you? To which Shin replies, Kabito, my friend, you know I can get my... Huh? As suddenly, the Supreme Kai feels his entire existence fade away, tied, of course, to the life of Beerus the Destroyer. My lord! No! So our story continues in the aftermath of Vegito's final Kamehameha on Beerus. The smoke begins to dissipate, gently revealing a figure in the midst. As it finally clears, we see Vegito is breathing heavily, sweat beating from his brow, and his chest rising and falling with speed, huffing and puffing as though his lungs simply cannot receive enough oxygen to keep his body alive. Finally, he gathers his strength and smirking says, <laughs> He's not here anymore. Looks like he got away somehow. I, I can't seem to sense a trace of him anywhere. I should have known. <laughs> so typical of Beerus. Having said this, Vegeta begins to look his eyes darting back and forth, searching for any sign of movement that could be Beerus. Vegito doesn't like this. How could Beerus be avoiding his senses in this form? Nothing should be able to escape him. Vegito continues to scan the area, but he finds nothing. It's as if Beerus simply faded away, written out of existence. Vegito's anger begins to rise to a crescendo, his patience running thin before he yells out, so this is the great Beerus. They didn't tell me you like to run away from fights you cannot win. Show yourself immediately and let your fate be assured. Do you hear me? Come out now, you coward. Are you going to fight me or not? He soon spots Whis down below and yells out to him. 
Weiss, what kind of game is this? Since when do so-called gods run and hide from a fight? And to think of all the remarkable things I heard about Beerus' power. Tell me, where is that kitty cat? Has he gone to drink some milk? Take a nap in the sun? Perhaps he's chosen to pick a fight with some mice instead of the great Saiyan race before him. This is so unbefitting of a god. But Whis is simply just silent for a moment, a thought growing in his mind, thinking of the right words to say, before then finally looking at Vegito with a face of concern and says, I don't know how else to tell you this, but he is not hiding Vegito. He is gone. You killed him. Huh? What did you say? Vegito is utterly blindsided by the news. He doesn't know how to compute the words that he just heard. His face contorts into shock at first. I... I killed him? That's what you're saying? He's no more? Vegito can hardly believe the words are coming out of his own mouth. But then he begins to nervously smile, saying, You must be kidding. There's simply no way that I have killed him. If I truly had, then you wouldn't be so calm about his death. You wouldn't be so emotionless as you are right now. Please, spare me this nonsense and stop with the games. I do not like to indulge in such childish activities. But Whis is eerily devoid of any emotion still, as though he didn't just witness what happened to Beerus. Whis opens his mouth and calmly replies, how else should I be reacting, Vegito? Did you expect something else of me? I am an angel attendant. I exist only to serve the wants and needs of the God of Destruction in this universe. Does it alarm you to hear that I have no feelings, either positive or negative, towards my assigned God? That is the way of the angels, and that is the way that it has always been. There are no childish activities as you say, just merely duty. Whis then points in a direction and says, If you don't believe me, just look over there and you will find the answer that you seek. Vegito's eyes flicker in the direction of where Whis is pointing and for a moment his facial expression runs cold. It takes him a while to fully believe what he is seeing before... <coughs> And there, motionless on the floor, is Beerus' arm, the last surviving part of him. The rest has been blasted out of existence. Vegito, still in disbelief, tries to wrap his brain around what is happening. No, there's no way. I don't understand how this can be. This isn't what I wanted. Vegito then closes his eyes in sadness and anger, his emotions getting the better of him, as an ache in his heart begins to swell that only he can feel. He wrestles internally with his feelings as he thinks, How? How powerful are we in this form? I didn't know that we were capable of such power. I would have held back if I knew this would happen. I would have stopped myself from going too far. Damn it, the Vegeta in me got carried away. I lost control, I let this happen. Vegeta then flies down to where Beerus' arm lays, completely still on the ground. He stoops down low and slowly picks up Beerus' hand. For a few moments, he peers at it sadly, a range of emotions coursing through his body. Hating that after everything that has happened, it finally came down to this. What? What have we done? Following this, Vegeta then turns to Whis, his mind churning through options, trying to think of a way to change what happened. He says, So, what happens now? I have a bad feeling about this. I know that they're extremely powerful, but I wouldn't think the Dragon Balls alone had the ability to revive a god. What do I need to do to fix this? I know that this is my wrong, and I have to find a way to make this right, Whis. I will give my life 
if it means bringing back Beerus. Whis, however, just looks back at him, again with a face that holds no real emotion or tells. I'm sorry, Vegito, but there is nothing you can do now. What's done is done. We cannot turn back time here. Just wait there. Your just reward will come to you now. Goodbye for now. Before suddenly vanishing away to the surprise of Ultra Vegito. But behind Vegito, another set of feet arrived just as fast onto the scene as we left it. Huh? This presence? Is that you? Beerus? Leaving Ultra Vegito to slowly but assuredly turn around only to be met with a shocking sight. What? What are you doing here? And suddenly standing before him out of nowhere, all 11 gods of destruction appear and surround Vegito, boxing him in from all sides. And there is no escape. We are treated to a close up of their faces. They look hauntingly angry, their teeth gritted and eyes narrow. There is only one thing on their mind, and that is making Vegito pay for what he has done to Beerus. The two angriest, with bloodlust emanating from them, being Champa, the brother of Beerus, and Belmod, the best friend of the former God of Destruction. <coughs> Vegito is rooted to the spot in shock unable to believe that the God of Destructions would appear and pin their sights on him. This isn't good, and he knows it. He peers at them, unsurely saying, The Gods of Destruction? What is this? Don't understand what's going on here. What are you all doing? This is about another tournament. This isn't the right time. Belmont though then notices that in Vegito's hand he is holding none other than Beerus's severed arm. Belmont at first gains a smirk on his face, almost unbelieving of the audacity of Vegito to hold his victim's arm like a trophy, saying, You saying scum? The truth is out in the open now. So you were the one who killed our fellow god before outreaching his hand in a rage and yelling, I bet you thought you'd get away with this, didn't you, mortal? Well, we will not stand for this. You will pay, you treacherous scum. Do you hear me? You will pay. He then looks to the other gods who are all in agreement, now knowing their worst fears are confirmed and the assailant is right before them. There's a hunger in the eyes of the eleven gods, a hunger for Vegito's blood and pain. They lack no confidence, as they know together, however strong Ultra Vegito may be, he stands no chance against the eleven strongest in the multiverse. And with a sorrowful rage, Chumper yells, Gods of destruction, hear me! We shall do this for Beerus! We cannot allow his death at the hands of this Saiyan scum to go unpunished! We must work together to bring this trash to justice. Nobody murders a god of destruction and is allowed to get away with it. Nobody! Hakai! What? Vegito begins to panic, worry written all over his face as all 11 gods of destruction who are surrounding him place their hands out ready to Hakai him. Vegito knows there is no escape now. His fate has been sealed. In the shock of this unbelievable turn of events, even the cocky Ultra Vegito can barely say a thing, petrified in the spot. But with no mercy, in unison, the 11 gods of destruction start to Hakai Vegito, and a tremendous ball of dark destruction energy begins to emanate in tandem from their outstretched hands, before they finally yell, Hakai! Ah! Vegito releases a scream that could strip paint from the walls. He's in sheer, utter agony, trapped and defenseless in a massive concentrated ball of Hakai. There is no way out for him. He is subject to the punishment from the gods, and nothing can save him now. But suddenly, 
just as fast as they arrive, the Eleven Gods and Vegito vanish from the scene as if they were never there to begin with. Whis, who now reveals himself to still have been nearby, then finally begins to show some emotion as he looks on astounded as to what has just happened to Vegito and the gods. Whis then says, with remorse in his voice, Only Zeno knows what horrible fate lies for those mindless individuals that dare to kill a god. Accident or not, I leave this up to you now, father. Vegito's destiny is in your hands. Vegito then appears in a strange place. The same location, Goku first met the Grand Priest, Zeno and his guards. He sits to his knees, weak, hurt and coughing in pain. His body barely able to function after the agonizing punishment it just received. <sighs> what? What happened? Vegito gets up feebly and scans the desolate area. Nothing stirs. It seems as though he's the only one there. <gasps> he says. Where did those gods go? Did they spare me? Did they finally see that what happened to Beerus was an accident? Surely they must know. I didn't mean to kill him. That isn't me. But as Vegito self-reflects, out of nowhere, a stern voice hits Vegito's ears, calling out from the distance saying, Don't be so foolish, Saiyan. No, of course they did not spare you. Why would they ever do that? In fact, they brought you here for an even worse fate. <gasps> you! Vegito turns around to see that Zeno is standing there with his two guards and the Grand Priest. They're staring right at him as though they were looking into his very soul, scrutinizing Vegito's every movement. The subtle, happy and calming nature of the Grand Priest and Zeno have now worn off. It is almost like they are now two entirely different entities. Vegito is in utter disbelief and says, Zenchan, is that really you? So it was you who was behind all that? What is going on here? This is a big misunderstanding. I hope you realize. And still in pain and wrecked with fatigue, Vegito begins naively walking over to Zeno, saying, Listen to me carefully. You know me. I didn't mean to do any of this. It's not what I wanted. If there's a way to bring Beerus back, I'll do it. Just... This... This is... But before he can move any further, Vegito looks down and sees one of Zeno's guards has appeared right in front of him and delivered an excruciating punch right in his gut, with the guard confidently saying, Stand back. Move only when told to move. Vegito coughs out blood in pain. The wear and tear on his body from the eleven gods hurting him has made him too slow to react to the punch. Vegito can only drop onto one knee, saying, Damn, they're really fast and strong. I didn't see it coming. It was on to me before I could even move. Knowing that violence isn't the answer here, Vegito then looks up to Zeno again and says, Zenchan, stop this madness. Please just listen to me for a moment. Let me explain what's going on. It's me, Goku. Well, right now I'm actually Goku and Vegeta combined together. But you know me and you know this isn't right. Just give me a second to explain myself, damn it. But his words fall on deaf ears. Zeno doesn't want to hear the words coming out of his mouth and much less the Grand Priest, whose face becomes even more unimpressed and dark in nature. In a blur of extreme movement, fitting of the father of all angels, the Grand Priest stealthily appears behind Vegito, evading his senses and knocks him out from behind with one perfect blow. Oh, no! No! And with just that one move, 
The Grand Priest, ranked one of the four strongest in the multiverse, knocks Vegito straight to base and onto the ground, unconscious like a mere child. With Vegito now out for the count, the Grand Priest, with a stern face, looks down and says, That will be enough talking. Do you not see that we do not need any more explanation from you? Your judgement is near and will come from Zeno in the next few days, God Killer. Until then, you have our permission to rot here in silence. The scene then goes pitch black as some time passes by. <coughs> Let me out of here! And from the pitch black, we are treated to a shocking image of a severely bloody and bruised Vegito who is now suspended in mid-air by a jungle of chains that bind him from the walls and ground. Now topless, each one wraps around a limb from his feet to his legs, his arms and his neck. He's completely bound, trapped and nowhere to escape. This is the tragic end of Ultra Vegito. Or is it? And so the story begins after Vegito has been imprisoned, his arms and legs all chained up by these special God Realm chains. In the weeks that followed, Vegito still has some hope and glimmer of light in him, thinking at this point there is still surely some way he escapes, some way he's freed from this situation like he has been so many times from similar scenarios in the main timeline. He struggles... <laughs> Come on! What the hell are these made of? I can't do a thing. Whatever this is, it's suppressing my key! Zeno! Let me go already! I can't do this anymore! <sighs> Eventually though, it finally begins to dawn on Vegito as his first tears appear, that these screams and attempt to resist are completely futile. If plot armor was to save him from this, it would have done so long ago already. As the tears fall, he comments, It's no use! This is no fairy tale, no dream, no nightmare. This is my life now! Beerus is dead, gone, and I'm really facing the punishment for it! I just wish I could die, but whatever is in these chains, not even granting me that luxury. It's been weeks of no food or water, and I don't feel a thing. It's probably the same magic that's keeping me fused, I bet. With himself now finding at least some acceptance of his fate and future for now, Vegito then closes his eyes. Could it be meditation, sleep, or something else? In fact, it seems Vegito is about to do something both Goku and Piccolo have been doing for years in their pursuit of becoming stronger. As Vegito then thinks, Well, if I'm going to be here for a bit longer, if nothing else, at least I've got some time to train now without Bulma or Chi Chi nagging me for once. There's a brief moment of pure silence, as we have no idea what Vegito could even mean by training in these circumstances. His chain, for God's sake. What could he mean? It is then the scene shifts into within the inner mind of Vegito himself, and standing there is a familiar pair of legs with Saiyan boots, saying roughly, huh, This is ridiculous! Surely there's a way out of this! Have you got any ideas yet, you clown? To which we then see a familiar figure with an iconic haircut sitting down too. And he responds, Uh, beats me, Vegeta. I really didn't think Zenchan would be like that with me. I kind of thought we were friends. <laughs> you fool! To which Vegeta instantly reacts angrily to Goku's naive comments, continuing, Your friend, the Omni King, King of all! What on earth made you think he would spare us? The last time you ever brought him out, he ended up erasing my son's entire universe! I'd say we're lucky to even be alive, but I'd rather be dead in hell right now than stuck in here with you! 
This is truly my worst nightmare, and it's all because of you and your stupid idea to fuse into Vegito. Which in response, a still light-hearted Goku places his hand behind his head with a smile and says, Haha, <laughs> hey now, it's not like we had much of a choice. If we hadn't offered to give Beerus a challenge as Vegito, we would have been erased anyway. At least now we've got a chance to get back home one day. Besides, I'm pretty sure it's because of how new and inexperienced you are with Ultra Ego that we even went that far and killed Beerus. We'd have been fine if my Ultra Instinct was in control then. What did you say? Inexperienced? Resulting in Vegeta instantly getting angered by Goku's patronizing comments. Continuing, Shut the hell up, Kakarot! It's as much your fault as it is mine that happened! Don't you dare try to blame me! And furthermore, my Ultra Ego is near complete! Beerus no longer trains me! But there's a reason you're still training with Whis daily to perfect that pitiful Ultra Instinct of yours! Even after all this time! <laughs> if I was you, I'd have given up by now! <laughs> In response, Goku begins laughing, turning his back to Vegeta as he bows his head. It's unclear at first what he's doing, but there's a definite change in the atmosphere and air pressure around him. He slowly turns his face towards Vegeta with a calm and at peace smile, continuing, Sorry Vegeta, maybe you're right. You are the genius here after all. Don't think I haven't noticed just how quickly you mastered your ultra ego. But you know, now that we've found ourselves with all this time together, I'm sure we could find a way to both perfect things. <laughs> and suddenly, with a now serious look in his eyes, his hair a silvery white and covered in a divine aura, Goku enters his mastered Ultra Instinct form at will, commanding, You ready Vegeta? You wanted this ever since our last fight got stopped early because of Boo. Me and you, all out, nothing held back. Don't tell me you're too sad about being locked up to turn down a chance to fight me at my best. <laughs> but instantly, as if already prepared, Vegeta 2 enters his ultra ego form, saying with a cocky smirk, <laughs> I love it when you talk with such misguided confidence, Kakarot. Don't make me laugh! You know as well as I do, a Saiyan never turns down a battle! The two legendary Saiyans then stare each other down, with Goku looking down and saying, Huh, I knew it. Just so you know, in this setting, I know there's no way either of us can die. This is all in our heads, so believe me when I say, I'm going to come at you harder than I even went at Moro. To which a welcoming Vegeta just says, <laughs> Now that's what I like to hear! Bring it on, Kakarot! <laughs> the two then suddenly rush at each other with fury. <laughs> the two clashing with incredible force, trading punches, blocking, evading and more as their hand-to-hand -hand combat pushes them to eventually part. Ultra Gallic Gun! Kamehameha! As in a scene that harks back to their very first battle, Goku and Vegeta fire off their most powerful beams. With no planet or universe to worry about, they push themselves to their very limits to see finally who is truly stronger. And so, things continued like this for over 10 years, deep in the mind of Vegito. Now bearded, as time has passed. Though Vegeta himself could not break out, Goku and Vegeta continued to fight, non-stop as the only thing they could do. Their Zenkai boosts and training taking them to levels that simply could not be imagined by us viewers. And at the end of it, a fused Vegito of unbelievable power was born, as electricity generates around his body even from just his imagination. Ultra Vegito, the strongest god in history, was created, 
in the custody of the very gods who put him there in the first place. So our story continues with Vegito helpless and imprisoned. He's still chained up like some animal instead of the fearsome Saiyan warrior he truly is. It has been a long and fraught 10 years of being bound and kept here defenseless and entirely alone. His arms and legs, both limp, having been chained up now for a decade. A time that has felt to Vegito like many lifetimes over. Shockingly, we are then treated to our first glimpse of Vegito's face. He now sports a full and unkempt beard that has grown unchecked during his years of exile. His body is but a shadow of what it once was. His defined muscles and impressive torso now replaced with a form that has now withered away and is skinny and frail. His clothes are in tatters, torn and worn at the seams, for they were not made to withstand such wear and tear. It is not just Vegito's body that is diminished, but his soul too, and it's evident in his facial expression. He wears the face of a man who is beaten broken and pushed further than their limits can withstand. As we zoom out and see the true sunken state of our once hero, it is odd to realize that even after all this time, despite it being many many years, Vegeta and Goku are still fused together in the form of Vegito. It is as if the room or the chains themselves simply won't allow them to break apart. They are bound together for eternity it seems just as their imprisonment dictates. In this time alone, with nothing to do and no one to talk to, Vegito has well and truly been broken, existing only as a silent mess made up of Goku and Vegeta, who they too have become shells of their former selves. Vegeta in his side of Vegito's consciousness can only mutter, BOMA! While Goku can only whisper, Chi Chi. But every so often, a sign of life, if you can call it that, shows itself in the form of PTSD as tears suddenly and randomly appear in the eyes of the great Saiyan. After all, could you ever imagine the pain gone through to have been at the top of the world to now be at the very bottom, trapped forever due to an event which was no more than a mistake? It's in these brief moments that Vegito mutters, Beerus. But suddenly, for the first time in years, before him, a small dot of light begins to appear. It starts off small and then gradually begins to grow and grow, reaching the size of a large portal. Vegito doesn't know if this is real or his mind is simply breaking down further, causing him to hallucinate. <laughs> Is... is this real? This warmth... it feels... familiar. Thinking to himself as though a voice from somewhere would come and answer him. From the portal though, indeed a familiar set of feet step forward, gently as if attempting to arrive in secrecy. Vegito raises his head slowly, trying to get a better view of who it could be. He's seen those feet before, but he can't for the life of him remember where. His memory just isn't what it once was. <coughs> but before we know it, Vegito is now wide-eyed, his face beginning to contort with confusion and shock. He cannot believe who he is seeing. Who? Who is it? He cries out, but his words are greeted with silence. The person comes closer and closer, and the look of realization then dawns on Vegito's face. No! It can't be! Please! You! And standing there, looking as elaborate as ever, is in fact the Angel of Universe 7, Whis, who silently stands there, not uttering a word. It's not even clear just yet if he's arrived as a friend or foe. Regardless though, Vegito cannot contain his emotion. He yells out after years in silence, Whis! Is that really you? Surely my eyes do deceive me. Cannot be you. Why? Why now? After all this time, 
After everything I've been through, where were you? Vegito is screaming with intensity now. Rivers of tears are running down his face. The emotional trauma of being left to perish like this breaking through. It's clear just how much sorrow and pain the Sane has been left to endure through all these years. Only one can imagine what that must truly have felt like. So much so, even Whis looks on at him with a sorrowful face, and choosing his words carefully, he finally speaks and says, I know that my words are probably the last thing you need right now, Vegito-san. I see that the years have not been good to you. You have gone through a world of pain I cannot imagine, and for that, I am truly sorry. I am. For a moment, Vegito waits as if Whis has more to say, but that's it. Whis continues to look at him as if those words would be enough to heal his broken soul. And in return, Vegito is all fury. He lashes at the chains binding him, his eyes brimming with wrath. He thrusts a chain fist forward as if he may be able to reach Whis, but it's no use. He's bound like a dog. He opts instead to attack with his words, shouting, That's all you have to say? Those few pointless words? After ten years of me wrongfully being trapped here? What good is your sorry? Will it give me back my life? You knew I didn't deserve this. Beerus wanted to spar us, not the other way around. I would never kill him on purpose. And yet you said nothing. You let them take me and destroy me like this. How can you even look at yourself in the mirror? But Whis then begins to quietly walk towards Vegito and slowly places a calming hand on Vegito's shoulder. Vegito doesn't expect this. He doesn't know what to do. But then again, what can he do? Whis begins to talk, his voice calm and soothing as he replies, I know, Vegeta-san. I know. You think that I don't care? That I haven't been trying to right this wrong? That's simply not true. For the last ten years, I've tried over and over again to plead your case with my father, the Grand Priest. But it has been to no avail. There is only so much a son can do to make his father listen. You know I have no audience with Xena. Therefore, my father was my only way in. But you must also know, by angelic law, there is no excuse for the complete destruction of a god. You see, Vegito, you did not just kill Beerus by your mistake. In reality, in your ultra-ego and ultra-instinct-fused form, your destruction energy from Vegeta's side led to his complete erasure. That is why I gave you no recourse to revive him. Once a god of destruction passes, by law, I must remain inactive until a new one is appointed. My powers cease there and then. Continuing on, we says, But I promise you, I didn't give up. I continued looking for a way to free you. That's when I thought of the Super Dragon Balls. They were the only option available. As far as anybody knows, they are the only Dragon Balls powerful enough to revive one that has been erased. But that would prove a lot harder than imagined as they are scattered all through both Universe 6 and 7. It took Champa a millennia just to find his initial 6, and even then, that was with the unlawful snooping within our own universe, something no angel can do. And besides, those balls were never meant to be used so casually like your Earth Dragon Ball. The Dragon God Zalama would simply forbid it. Once every 1,000 years is what he orders, since it is with his own power that the dragon draws its ability from. Vegito, hearing this, then bows his head, his neck muscles unable to hold any longer. He's heard enough. Nothing Whis is saying will get him out of here. He coughs up blood. <laughs> his body, even now, still failing him. Before then suddenly looking at Whis again, his face filled with anger once more as he questions, But why? Why didn't you do anything before Beerus died? It didn't have to be like this at all. I know for a fact 
You could have foreseen what was happening. You know Beerus better than anyone else. You could have saved him. You could have reversed time and stopped it before he was erased. But instead, you allowed it to happen. You watched on. You even watched on as I was nearly destroyed. But we simply responds, Vegito-san. You're not thinking clearly. If I could have done that, don't you think I would have? Don't you think I would have intervened? Your simple mortal ideals are not the same as what is actually capable under angel law and the powers that be. There are rules in place. Rules that must be abided by no matter what the situation or context. For one, an angel only exists to serve as an attendant to the god of destruction. This is our divine purpose what we were born into existence to do. We cannot and do not ever act under our own will or needs. To do so would result in our own erasure from any and all timelines. It is certain death. The only times I have shown you such a technique, Beerus would have been right next to me to give me the go-ahead. I acted upon his say-so, not just because I felt like it. The only other exception to the rule is, is if my own god of destruction makes a mistake that would harm the universe he and the Supreme Kai reside over. This is the one and only time that I may step in and correct this flaw and undo what has been done. I know this must be hard to hear Vegito-san, but your destruction of Beerus, I'm afraid, fell into neither category. And even if it did, I don't think you understand the power you have, Vegito-san. Not even I could have reacted fast enough to stop your attack at that moment. And once he was destroyed, as I said, my powers ceased regardless. Tears then once again begin to scream down Vegito's face again, as he realizes this is it. This is his life now. There is no hope for Beerus or himself. He has been doomed to live out a life in chains. Vegito asks one final time. So, there's really nothing I can do. There's no way for me to escape this hell. This life of torture. Even death would be better than this. Why even come? Just to take away the last bit of hope I had? But even in a dark situation like this, the slightest glimmer of light from Goku and Vegeta appears as a smirk comes to Vegito's face and her memory begins to surface. Even while crying, even while in this dire situation that he's in, he still tries to bring some bleak humor, saying, Don't tell me you've come all this way just to ask me to be the next god of destruction again, because honestly, after everything I've been through, I have to say, I might just consider it this time. <laughs> but I'm thinking, it would be as Vegito, because I'm guessing these Angel Grade Batara of yours aren't going to defuse us anytime soon at this point, are they, Whis? And in response, Whis just looks at him with a small smile and says, Hmm, I see that even after all these years alone in this godforsaken place, your humor hasn't left you. It's good to see that smile again. But yes, Perhaps if you had defeated Beerus under official conditions in a proper bout as a God of Destruction candidate like Topo was, then your ascension to God of Destruction could have rightfully followed. But to prove yourself stronger outside of those conditions, I'm sorry, but it means nothing to Father or Zeno. And murder outside of it only means treachery and punishment. As we know from your old friend Jiren, Despite being proven to be stronger than Belmod in a bout of his own, he will never become the next god of destruction of Universe 11. Six. Simply because he too refused to become a god of destruction candidate just as Vegeta did. These are the hard lines that cannot be crossed, Vegeta-san. Laws we must obey. Vegeta, for a moment, realizes the truth in his words, saying, uh, got it. Like Kieran. Continuing his explanation, we says, But to answer your question in regards to your fusion, you're correct. When I gave these earrings to you both, 
I told you that these would last at least one day. And that is because Angel Great Potara can last forever if need be. Though it is up to you, the wearer. If you decide to take them off, you will find that you will return to your individual states, back to Vegeta and Goku as separate entities. But I guess for the last 10 years, you haven't exactly had the luxury of doing that or anything else for that matter. Vegito, in response, looks down forlorn once again, muttering, I... I see. I guess thank you for the information. As meaningless as it is while I'm locked up like this. But one thing I still don't understand, Whis, is you've come all this way to tell me about angel laws. Why I cannot become a god of destruction and even to tell me I'm stuck as Vegito too. Yet the question still remains, why exactly are you here? What is it that you need from me? Look at how late you've left this. All I've wanted to do all this time is just go back and see my family. To go back to Earth. To continue my life as it once was. But from your words, it seems that hope is now dead and gone forever. Whis, now with a serious face, responds, I know that I cannot fix what has been done to you, Vegito-san. Nor can I truly emphasize with the pain and suffering you must have gone through being locked away here for all these years. But hopefully, my next words will be of great comfort to you, Vegito. I have come to free you. What? Vegito's face immediately lights up in shock. He cannot contain the emotions coursing through his veins. He doesn't know whether to be happy or scared. He continues, Wait! What are you saying, Whis? What do you mean you've come to free me? How are you going to do that? And why now? After all this time? Whis then turns his back to the Saiyan, and with a smile and sweat beating down to his face, then explains, I don't want to keep you any longer, but of course, I know that you desire an explanation. The truth is, Vegito-san, I feel as though my time as an angel has finally come to a close. Though my powers have returned after a new god of destruction has been appointed, it pains me to admit that the gods of destruction have changed since Beerus' death and not for the better. It is hard to explain ten years of events, but I have never seen them behave in such a way or even think the way they currently do. After disposing of you, the gods have since become cocky and arrogant in the most ungodlike of ways. It's as if they now know they are simply untouchable. For you, Vegito-san, were the ultimate example to be made of. You were the strongest mortal in the multiverse, the strongest mortal that ever lived, and now they had imprisoned you forever for destroying one of them. I was barely keeping it together. I was at the end of my line, but still, I decided to keep going. It was not my place, I am just an angel. However, it was after their most recent act where they destroyed something very dear to me that I knew as soon as a new god of destruction was appointed and my powers were back, I would arrive here. I knew then that something had to be done about this, and that something is this. I stand here before you knowing that my final act before disappearing will be to save you, Vegito-san, to finally undo what has been done, but this time, not by time reversal. A shocked Vegito is distraught, unable to accept the words he is hearing. He says, What? Disappearing? To where? I don't understand any of this. What exactly are you saying, Whis? Whis then smiles softly again at Vegito, and then puts his arm out in front of him almost as if ready to blast or attack him, saying emotionally instead, Vegito-san, I know that this isn't enough, but I beg of you to please accept these last words of mine. I'm sorry for what you have gone through, and still going through. I'm sorry for what my father and Zeno and the other eleven gods have allowed to transpire. The evils they have inflicted on you 
and the horrors they forced a hero such as yourself to face, I know that it is wrong. I am but a mere angel, and to meddle with mortal affairs and to go against the decision of my superiors is one that will be met with erasure. But I have watched Universe 7 for a millennia, and in that time, I know what is ultimately best for it. There is nobody who knows this universe better than I, and it is time for me to take a stand, to do what is right, instead of just following orders as I have always done. It is time for me to say goodbye, my friend. And with that, we yells, Release! And just like that, a force from Weast is thrust upon the chains, snapping them open and breaking them up into pieces instantly. Vegito has been released after 10 years and yells, What? What? I'm free! Not used to standing up on his own, he immediately falls weakly to his knees as the rest of the shackles clamor on the ground. Trying to regather the strength he once had, but he coughs up blood once again, his body straining under its own weight. <coughs> My body, it feels different. Still on his knees, Vegeta then strains his heavy head to look up and suddenly yells, Please! He screams, a lump in his throat from emotion. He knows something is happening, something bad. But Whis says nothing. He simply smiles and stares at his mortal friend, Vegito, as he begins to slowly erase to nothing. His existence being wiped out for eternity, just as he had foreshadowed earlier. Vegito, even with no strength, finds something deep inside to throw out a hand and naively grab him. But as he tries to grab Whis, his hand is met with nothing but thin air. Whis has gone, disappeared into the nothingness that is Erasure. No! Whis! Vegito yells, but his words cannot follow wherever Whis has gone and are ultimately met with pure silence. He falls to the ground, wrecked with emotion, struggling to accept what is happening. He starts slamming the floor in anger, tears running down his face and splashing onto the floor, creating a puddle. <gasps> but suddenly, something piques his interest. There's something else in the room with him. At the corner of his eye, he notices that Whis's staff has been left behind by the angel. Slowly, mustering his strength and moving cautiously as if not to tempt fate, Vegito struggles to his feet and makes his way over to the staff. Instantly, he grabs it like it was made for him, only whispering, Whis, what did you? But now, moving the staff around full of hope and energy, he looks at it with a smirk saying, <laughs> I guess this was your last gift to me, Whis. I cannot thank you enough. Maybe, just maybe with this, I'll be able to travel to the other universes and to Zeno to try and sort this mess out. Is that what you wanted, Whis? Maybe this is how I bring you and Beerus back somehow. But for now, there's only one thing I have to do for my own sake, Whis. And that is go back to Earth. To see my family, my friends, my home. But first, I can't let anyone see me like this. Maybe Bulma would like it. But for Chi Chi, this is a big no-no. I gotta get rid of this damn beard! Vegeta then summons an energy sword from his hand and in one precise swoop, the beard falls to the floor in tatters. Now clean shaven and looking more like the Vegeta we know, Vegeta stands tall, almost a new man with a staff and calls forth, TAKE ME TO EARTH NOW! And surprisingly, as if the staff knew Vegito always as its wielder, then shoots off, taking him with her. But Vegito soon arrives in a blank and empty space. He looks around, 
Not sure what this means or even why he's here. There's literally nothing here but empty darkness. Definitely no sign of Earth. <laughs> this doesn't make sense at all. What the hell happened here? Did the staff take me to the wrong place or something? It couldn't be. Vegeta then places his fingers on his head, thinking, I'm not sure what's going on here, but no matter anyway. I'll just use instant transmission and lock on to someone on Earth. Hmm. Let's see who I can find. He closes his eyes and concentrates. <laughs> no way! But as he tries his best, he still can't seem to find anyone. Vegeta starts to panic now. He opens his eyes and says, What? No! That's... that's impossible! I can't sense Earth anymore or anyone on it anywhere! How could that be? This is where it should be! Following this, he immediately looks to his right and points to the moon saying, There it is! Earth's moon! Kami restored that long ago after Piccolo destroyed it! I'll never forget that, where it's supposed to be. Trying to rationalize things, Vegeta then places his fingers on his head again and tries to go somewhere, to lock on to someone, but again, nothing happens. As Vegito grunts, <laughs> You're kidding me! Even new Namek has gone! What is happening? Who could have done this? Surely, this is some kind of trick! A game someone is playing! <gasps> Wait a minute! Suddenly, Vegito's face goes extremely shocked and wide-eyed as he has a flashback to one of Whis's last words. Words that rang. They destroyed something very dear to me. The pain is almost too much for Vegito to bear. He grimaces in agony as he realizes what Whis was talking about. No, they didn't, did they? Even new Namek? As rage begins to build, he continues, Those damn gods, they imprisoned me for all this time, erased my family and friends, made Whis erase himself, removed our only hope of bringing anyone back! Why? Why? Vegito <laughs> immediately grabs onto his head, trying to restrain the beastly fury that is finding itself out. The heartache is too much, the grief begins to consume him and his primal sane rage overflows. <laughs> now completely powered up, his muscles bulge to a point that even surpassed how he was a decade ago, his eyebrows gone and surrounded in a majestic aura, Ultra Vegito screams so loud the entire universe hears. And with a crazed, almost insane look on his face, he proclaims, I'll kill them! I'll kill them all! No god will be safe from this day forth! And with those final words ringing throughout the multiverse, Ultra Vegito, the God Killer, has finally been born. So our story continues with the cold Ultra Vegito standing poised, rooted to the spot as all around him swarm sparks of dark electricity. His shirt is off, revealing a perfect form, as though his muscles are carved by hand one by one. We've never seen a Saiyan like this before in the history of Dragon Ball, as he continues to mutter, I will make this right, no matter what I have to do. But for a moment, Ultra Vegito then stands there in silence, his mood suddenly changed as his head bows and thoughts run through his mind of his loved ones. Around him, we see that Ultra Vegito is thinking of Bulma. Chi Chi, Trunks, Gohan and Goten. He's wrecked with emotion, feeling a pain that none of us could ever understand. Slowly, words begin to come from his gritted teeth. My... my family... 
They're all gone. Taken from me. And I didn't even get the chance to save them. To fight for them. And now, they're Dragon Balls. They're gone too. Why? For one mistake, they took everything else. Everything. There's an unnerving coldness to Ultra Vegito's stare, like a part of him has been broken. A part that may be once broken can never be repaired again. But a thought comes to him. Ultra Vegito lifts his face and looks over his shoulder to the staff, his fist clenched in emotion. I can't let this be, but I also can't jump to conclusions. I have to know for sure what happened. They deserve more than this. I deserve more than this. Ultra Vegito then grabs the staff and peers into it. And sure enough, it soon begins to show an image. The scene shifts to show our big blue earth perched effortlessly in the great expanse of space. The other planets lurking in the background. But as we zoom in closer into its atmosphere, Suddenly, all 11 gods of destruction are seen, for the first time, all together on the planet of our heroes. Their looks a mixture of contempt and sinister pleasure, as if they know exactly what they are about to do. And Champa, with the most sinister smirk, then says, as he looks around to Belmod, I guess it's time to get this party started. You guys ready to have some fun? <laughs> I know I am. This is the planet where those dirty scum grew up. And from what I hear, they even have some offspring around here. Along with a ton of his comrades that all affiliate with that god killer. Belmod in response looks angry. A sneer smeared across his face as he then responds. <laughs> How disgusting! How did Beerus even let such a pathetic planet exist? It's not like him to allow such disobedient mortals to coexist on his turf. He wanted those Saiyans gone, but I guess he just missed a few and got lazy to do anything about it. Utterly despicable Beerus. Huh? Suddenly though, Belmont notices some power levels arriving. His attention is drawn to the sky, where four bright lights get larger and larger, their power surges increasing as they get closer too. And soon enough, as we zoom in, we see the four are none other than the protectors and Z-fighters of Earth. Gohan, Yamcha, Krillin and Piccolo. Eventually, they reach the gods, and Gohan is immediately surprised at their presence. But he has one thing on his mind to ask, and he says, Hey, that clothing. You're the gods of destruction, aren't you? I remember you from the tournament. I don't know why you're here, but Dad and Vegeta have been missing for weeks now. Nobody's been able to get a hold of them. Beerus or Whis. Have you got any idea what's going on? For a moment, there's a stalemate, as the gods just stare back at these mortals who dare address them so casually. And even Krillin comments, Uh, guys? They don't seem like they're in the talking mood. While Piccolo just grunts, I have a bad feeling about this. Eventually though, from behind the gods, Licker, the god of destruction of Universe 9 appears, looking completely angered by their approach, responding, Huh? Your dad and Vegeta. How interesting indeed. No wonder you thought you had the right to demand answers from a deity. It would appear that this child is one of the god killer's spawn. What? Instantly shocking Piccolo as he hears the term god killer being connected in any way to his friend Goku. As he continues, Wait, what did you just say? Did you just call Son Goku and Vegeta? God killers? That's impossible. But Lika soon bears his teeth. Vex now, he continues angrily. No, it's not impossible, Namekian. It's the truth. 
his father and Vegeta, the traitors of this universe, have been sentenced to death for their actions. A race for the crime of killing Universe 7's God of Destruction, Beerus. A crime we shall not stand for, and one that has still not had its toll paid. What? <gasps> no! And in unison, Quillen, Yamcha and Piccolo are left in disbelief. As Yamcha tries to alleviate the situation, What? No way! There has to be some kind of mistake! They wouldn't do that! But Gohan is having a harder time receiving this information than anybody else. His mouth is wide open, sweat glistening on his face. Something inside him has clicked. He's not worrying about what they think his dad has done, he's worrying about what they've done to him. Tell me, you didn't just say those words! You erased my dad! As in Hakaid? You mean not even the Dragon Balls can ever bring him back now? You think you can just say that and get away with it? <laughs> and instantly, something snaps in Gohan. The same feeling covers his body as when he first saw Android 16 die before his eyes. <laughs> and with a roar that has now become unlike Gohan, he screams loud. Powering up, the energy surging around his body being immense. His hair stands on end, reaching to the heavens, his fists pulled up and pointing down towards hell. The same place he wishes to send these gods who took his father away. <laughs> With complete conviction and confidence, Gohan leans forward and begins rushing in at the gods, fury etched all over his face. I don't care what you think he's done! You bring my dad back now! Belmont though just watches with his arms on his hips, unfazed and almost amused as a sinister look creeps onto his face and he says, <laughs> Look at this. It seems that the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, does it? Can't say I'm surprised. I guess that means we have another god killer on the loose that needs to be put down. Ridiculous! Handle him now, Licker, so we can be done with this. Just like that, Licker instantly teleports in front of Gohan, responding, Gladly. Gohan, seeing this though, instantly stops in his tracks, as in front of him is now a ball of Hakai immediately enlarged and ready to be shot. Gohan can't help but think in fear. Huh? How did he get there so fast? I barely saw him move. What is that energy? Is that? But determined to not waste any more time, the orb of destruction energy begins to grow at an alarming rate, and Licker opens his mouth wide and yells, You filthy mortal! Time to pay for your father's sins! Hakai! For a brief moment, Gohan is mentally lost in a state of shock. He has no idea what's happening, but even if he did, there would still be nothing that he could do about it. Slowly, we see Gohan being erased from existence, his whole body disappearing as he's frozen in place. Until finally, there isn't a single trace left of Son Gohan, the Saiyan who once had the most potential. Gohan, no! And Piccolo, with more emotion than he's ever shown before, yells out with futility for the man he thought of like a son, reaching out to save him even though he is now dust. And Krillin is also filled with emotion, watching as someone he has seen grown from a child completely go away, as he yells, No! Gohan, please hold on! <gasps> but Krillin doesn't even get to finish calling out for Gohan before his face changes as something doesn't feel right. Something is off. A sudden and sharp pain in his chest beginning to emerge, and when he looks down, 
It's soon revealed Krillin has been tragically shot with an arrow made of destruction energy, piercing his chest and going straight through the other side. Krillin can only look down and mutter, What? Oh, why me? As we then see his soon-to-be murderer standing with a smile, pleased with herself, and even holding the very bow that shot Krillin. Helles, the god of destruction of Universe 2. She says, Nice, that's a perfect shot. Told you fools, I knew these Hakai arrows would come in handy. Well that's my part done, one less threat to the gods removed. You're welcome, I'll let you guys handle the rest of this scum. While Krillin stands rooted to the spot, unable to move, and then slowly, he too starts to fade from existence as the Hakai energy from the arrow begins to seep into his body, until the best friend of Son Goku is now nothing more than particular matter. <coughs> Krillin, no! Piccolo can only stare in panic, powerless to stop his friends, his loved ones from being erased. He feels at this moment he either fights and dies, or dies without a chance, like the rest. He shouts out to Yumcha, gritting his teeth. Yumcha, listen to me, we don't have much time. I need you to back me up while I attack. This is our last chance to save Earth and everybody we love. What? But Piccolo 2 soon finds his words interrupted as he now stares into a sight that no mortal should ever see even in their worst nightmares. Surrounding Piccolo are four gods of destruction, Kitella, Cedra, Rumshi and Arak. Their hands pointed firmly at the Namekian, blocking any escape and trapping him like a lab rat. Piccolo, staring in panic, can only let out, No! Their speed! I can't even keep up with them, especially when their key is undetectable! In a last ditch effort, Piccolo looks to Yumcha for some backup, and yells, Yumcha! We've got no choice! Use your solar! Huh? But as Piccolo turns around, he shockingly notices that not even a trace of Yumcha remains. Could he have been taken out already by the gods? No, he's still alive, just flying away with his eyes full of tears yelling, No way in hell am I sticking around for that! I'm out of here! <sighs> as Piccolo just watches on gobsmacks that this was the reaction of Earth's final defense. We then get a close up on the faces of the four gods surrounding Piccolo. They look vengeful, determined in their mission, in unison they all yell, Hakai! As four massive balls of destruction then proceed to scrape onto Piccolo. As the Namekian opens his mouth, and screams in terror and pain, before he too finally becomes nothing but dust. Goku's first great rival and Gohan's second father, now gone forever. <laughs> and now with all the important and most powerful fighters of Earth disposed of personally, Belmont begins laughing mockingly while carrying above him a humongous ball of Hakai aimed only at one place, as he commands, Fellow Gods of Destruction, I invite you to join me in the erasure of the God Killer's home. If you want revenge for Beerus, say I. I. As each one of the other ten Gods of Destruction yell in unison in agreement. And soon after, we're treated to a shocking image of all 11 gods, hands out, and some form of Hakai energy ball, all different styles and shapes, together one final time. This is for Beerus! Hakai! And thus, from the silence of space, 
we from a distance see all 11 Hakai's impact on the Earth, inevitably causing it to slowly completely erase. From the city, we see a familiar young woman holding a precious baby. As the oblivious baby's face begins to vanish in the light, we all realize it is tragically Baby Pan. And as she too disappears forever, she naively lets out, Grandpa? Before just like that, planet Earth and all its inhabitants are lost forever at the hands of the merciless gods of destruction. <coughs> Ultra Vegito is left in complete shock, tears flowing from his eyes. No! Those... those monsters! They really did it! Billions of people! Innocents! My family! My friends! They'll pay! They... will pay! Tears continue to flood Ultra Vegito's eyes, as for a moment he thinks in silence, wallowing in the sorrow and pain of what he's just witnessed. In that moment, he can only call out the name of his first son. Gohan, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Take me to their killers now! But suddenly, in a rage like a switch has flipped, Ultra Vegito yells at the staff he wields as if it were his slave. And instantly, he and the angelic staff find themselves shooting off majestically. Eventually Vegito arrives somewhere foreign, in another universe, in a place he's never seen before. His fury is slowly replaced with intrigue as he looks around, wondering where Whis's staff has taken him to. What the? Where the hell am I? This place seems so strange. I don't even know if the staff took me to where I wanted to go. Vegito thinks for a second looking around at the strange inhabitants of this planet that are looking back at him from the shadows just as confused as he is. <sighs> I guess I could use instant transmission to pinpoint where this universe's god of destruction is hiding. Vegeta places two fingers to his head and waits, but nothing happens. Then he realizes what he's done wrong. Oh right, I forgot. I can't sense a god's key signature! Damn it! Hold up. Maybe... Maybe I can! Vegito then violently grabs the staff and yells out, Take me to this universe's god of destruction immediately! And the staff then mysteriously once again does as it's told and Vegito shoots off once more, leaving as quickly as he arrives and Ultra Vegito then suddenly arrives on another strange planet, this time on one very similar to Beerus' old home. Huh? Immediately Licker's angel Korn senses an intruder, his eyes darting to the direction of where his senses are rising from. He informs Licker by his side, My lord, I do not mean to alarm you, but it appears that someone has arrived. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe your life may be in danger. <sighs> At first, Licker appears unbothered, but a sense of curiosity then inevitably reaches him as he responds, Hmm, <laughs> my life in danger. Now who the hell would be powerful enough in this universe to make you say that core? Probably the God Killer, you damn fox! And I think it's time to remind you why I have that name! Instantly starting the duo who could not sense Ultra Vegito in his perfected form. Huh? Who the hell is that? While Korn says, No, that staff. As Vegito slowly descends, he mockingly lets out, <laughs> Look at your dumb faces! Do you even realize yet who has arrived before you? I guess it's been 10 years, 
Maybe you're starting to lose your eyesight in your old age, liquor. What? It's you! How? How is this possible? You should be dead. You should have been erased. And now Licker's face changes to one of shock as it finally becomes clear who this figure in the air is. Meanwhile, Vegito descends laughing. <laughs> About time, you dumb fox! Before landing on the ground, simultaneously stabbing the staff into the floor for it to stand up by itself upright. Vegito then continues, responding to Licker saying, But yes, Fox, you're right. I should be dead. And in fact, I am. On the inside. What is before you now is a ghost of my former self. And I won't be laid to rest until you gods pay for what you did to Earth. To my family and friends. And for what you did to Gohan! Immediately, on reminding himself on what happened to his oldest son, Ultra Vegito ferociously powers up, the ground around him cracking from the weight of such a monstrous surge of energy, his hand letting go of Whis's staff now, ready to take revenge for everything. <laughs> what the hell is this now? This looks like both destruction energy and Ultra Instinct! Is this what Beerus was dealing with when he died? Impossible! The power of Vegito proves so great, even the God of Destruction must cover himself as he looks in awe. <gasps> what the? But suddenly, from behind liquor, Ultra Vegito appears. Flying at him emotionless, but at full speed, with his arm already cocked back. And with a punch, Vegito has been waiting 10 years to deliver. Ultra Vegito slams liquor right in his face, causing the god to draw blood. As he's seen flying at top speed towards one of the planet's mountains. Crash landing deep into it with seemingly no way to stop himself. Meanwhile, Licker's angel watches the fight unfold from the side. And surprised at what he's just witnessed, he thinks, Hmm, this mortal is like none other I have seen before. He was on liquor before he could even move. That's some speed, considering Lord Liquor is known around the multiverse for just how fast he is. Yet he didn't even have a chance to block that attack. And what's worse, I didn't anticipate it either. But as Kuhn thinks on, Licker immediately bursts out of the mountain, angrier than ever, living up to his appearance, growling like a feral beast. He stares at Vegito like he's his next meal and proclaims, You may have killed Beerus with that kind of lucky punch, I'll give you that. But I'll be damned if you slaughter another one of us deities, you filthy mortal. Allow me to remind you why we are gods and you are just another lowly life form. With that comment, Licker balls his fists together, digs his feet into the ground and powers up. Rocks and debris blast away from him. The air around him intensifies and begins to crackle with lightning and sparks as the fox god begins emanating a powerful destruction energy from his very skin. And from behind, he suddenly sprouts nine tails, each one with a small but concentrated ball of destruction energy sitting at the top. <gasps> Ultra Vegito, meanwhile, seeing this, is left completely taken aback for a second. With a bemused face, he responds, What the? A nine-tailed fox, huh? <laughs> now why does that sound familiar? Thinking back to an old anime, Trunks was watching on TV. Licker, on the other hand, doesn't find any of this funny. 
He's serious in his intentions, and as he gears up to fire, he yells, PREPARE TO DIE, GOD KILLER! And just like that, Licker instantly sends off all nine balls of her Kai, shot like cannonballs, each one so dangerous, just the slightest graze would result in complete erasure. But Ultra Vegito, either stupidly or confidently, remains totally calm, completely unfazed as he stands there watching as the balls of energy approach him. He just stares on coldly and thinks to himself, <laughs> That's really the best he's got? Ridiculous. I grow tired of this already. This is no challenge whatsoever. It seems I found myself at the home of the weakest god. Typical. I'll end this here and now find the others. Hopefully, they'll at least make me break a sweat before I dispose of them. And with that said, Vegeta conjures his signature energy sword in his left arm. A blade so sharp it could cut through anything. A true God Slayer blade. He plants his feet into the ground, waiting for the right moment to attack, taking his time before... <laughs> Ultra Vegeta without any fear shoots into the heart of the balls of energy and skillfully he moves through them, dodging each at the very last second until... Before Nika can understand what's going on, Ultra Vegito lands perfectly beside him. Balancing on one knee, his back to him, his blade still drawn behind him, and his face looking away as if he doesn't need to see what he's done because he already knows. Meanwhile, we see Licker's face is decidedly different, full of shock and open mouth. As he stands there with that frozen face, he inexplicably is still in that position and only mutters the words, God Killer. And we then go into the view of Licker, who at the moment can see his beloved angel court, until suddenly, the angle of his view sharply changes before falling on the ground and turning in a way that should just not be possible and standing there now headless with Licker's skull on the ground is a decapitated god of destruction explaining exactly what we just saw after enough blood gushes out Licker's lifeless body eventually then falls to the ground to the back of a now standing Vegito. Coldly, knowing his job is now done, Vegito then retracts his energy blade. And with now not even the slightest sign of remorse, Ultra Vegito then walks over to the deceased body and looks down saying, <laughs> 10 years, 10 years just so you can last less than a minute against me. No wonder you wanted me dead. How could a god command any respect, knowing full well they couldn't even hold a candle to a mortal? Soon, Vegito just as calmly places his hand out, and using his perfectly controlled destruction energy, creates his own ball of Hakai. As he looks down on liquor one last time, he says, Not even death is enough for you, Fox. You and your kind erased everything I ever loved everything in my life that was good. They can't even enjoy the afterlife because of your actions. And now, neither will you. Hakai! And with that, Ultra Vegito mercilessly erases what's left of liquor, his decapitated body and lone head too. And now, with at least Gohan avenged, Vegito walks back over to Whis's staff, ready to leave for his next destination and victim. But from behind, Korn calls out, Wait, Vegito. The angel has been watching patiently, and with a slight bit of hesitation proclaims, Before you go, there is something I must say to you. 
That staff that you wield as your own is not for mortal use. As I'm sure you are aware, that belongs to my dear brother Whis. I know not what you have done to him, nor how you are even able to wield its power. But it's blasphemous for an angel's instrument to be handled by those it is not meant for, especially for the evil deeds you are carrying out. I suggest that you leave that here, for you have already done enough to dirty the name of the angels, and I will not stand for any more. For a moment, there is a silence as Vegito says nothing in return. But with a sudden and maniacal turn of his face, Ultra Vegito is seen as he lets out incredibly... Oh yeah? Then do something about it, weakling! So our story continues after Ultra Vegito had just murdered the God of Destruction of Universe 8, Licker, and then had the audacity to taunt his Angel 2 to try and stop him. Korn looking angry at Vegito, then responds, What did you say, Vegito? Do you have any idea who you're talking to? May I remind you that I am no God of Destruction, nor mortal. You may have gained enough power to take down Beerus and Licker, but do not tempt fate in trying to take on their masters. We angels are blessed with the power of Zeno and the Grand Priest themselves. True Ultra Instinct, not the inferior copy you possess. Hand over my brother's staff at once, Vegito. Do not defile the names of the angels any more than you already have with your demonic deeds. But Vegito is still unfazed by any of the Divine Angel's comments, instead opting to maniacally laugh. <laughs> demonic deeds? Why do I like the sound of that? Listen, Angel, I have no doubt you're far stronger than that pathetic fox I just beheaded. But don't try and bluff your way into getting what you want. Like I said, want Weiss' staff? Then take it and show me this true ultra instinct of yours while you're at it. But despite Vegito's invite, something seems to stop Korn as a sweat drop falls from his forehead and he thinks introspectively, What disobedience. There isn't a hint of fear in his words. As expected, his years of confinement have caused this foolish mortal to lose his mind. He even believes himself beyond the power of us angels now. Seems he's only after the gods though, and I'm afraid at his current level he may actually be successful in his goal. Before I seek a new god of destruction to replace Licker, I must inform father. <coughs> what? what? He didn't. Suddenly though, the face of the angel Korn inexplicably changes. No longer is he calm and collected as he feels a sharp pain in the center of his body. <coughs> and shockingly, we soon see the reason why, as Ultra Vegito, still in his powered up form without warning, extends his energy blade to pierce through the body of the angel. The longest is ever extended, and never in a million years did we anticipate it would be used in such a way. <coughs> Why you? Korn, as shocked as we are, can only keep his eyes wide open and focused on Vegito, as blood gushes from his mouth, and for the first time in Dragon Ball history, we see an angel bleed. He continues muttering, What? What do you think you're doing, Vegito? You won't get away with this! But Ultra Vegito is still smiling, surrounded in dark electricity, only grinning in response, saying, <laughs> Won't get away with this? That's the point. I want those silly gods to dare and step foot to me again. I'm done with this game of hide and seek. You ever wonder why no one has showed up yet since I disposed of liquor 
unlike the way they did with Beerus, because they know now what they're dealing with. And now, unfortunately, you do too. <laughs> it's a shame. I knew from the second you approached me that you were kidding yourself. True Ultra Instinct. What a joke. If you really possessed that, there's no way that energy beam would have pierced you so easily. You're nothing but a liar. And I hate liars! How dare you think you could strike fear into the heart of someone who fears nothing anymore? Why fear death when the gods took everything I could ever want to live for? My friends, my family, my home. And even we died because of yours and that fox's actions. You let the things he and his band of gods did happen. And that makes you just as guilty as them. <coughs> You're not worthy to be called Weiss's brother. The only angel to have enough heart to correct what was wrong and free me from my shackles. What? Weiss freed you? Impossible. An angel can never get involved in the affairs of mortals especially involved in the punishments laid out by father himself. You're lying! You must have tricked him. Killed him while his back was turned. But Vegito unflinching in his explanation continues. I don't know how well you think you know your own brother, but Whis isn't the type to be hit from behind. If anyone here is supposed to have true ultra instinct, it would have been him. There's nothing impossible about it. He did a final act that was fitting of his name as an angel. Sacrificing himself so I could live on and stop you gods from living anymore. <laughs> and before he went, he made sure to tell me everything about you angels. Like exactly what happens to an angel when a god of destruction is destroyed. No! Whis, you didn't! But still with a sinister smile and look on Vegito's face, knowing that Korn knows exactly what he's going to say next, Vegito carries on. Yes, Angel. When a god of destruction dies, that angel that attends becomes inactive until a new god is found and all your mighty powers cease. You didn't think I would attack you so brazenly without knowing that first, did you? And now, it's time you too become dust. What? Vegito! You can't! You cannot destroy an angel! You will bring ruin to yourself! Father will not allow this! Stop! Funnily enough, after Korn yells this, Vegito's energy blade instantly retracts from the angel leaving a brutal looking wound in the process. Could our Vegito finally be seeing sense and fearing the reply of the Grand Priest and Zeno? Huh? He... he removed it. Uh, finally, seems not all is lost of this mortal, but his crimes... his crimes will still need to be paid. Vegeta, meanwhile, while retracting his blade, remains coldly silent for a moment, not giving an inch of what his intentions or logic are, until a dastardly smile that reminds me of Freezer then forms on his face, and he tells Korn, <laughs> So you're saying if I kill you and the angels, I'll get those two midgets to finally come out and stop me? Perfect. I grow tired already of how weak you lower gods are. It's about time I got the challenge I deserved. So thanks for the heads up. I'll be sure to make this quick and painless. <laughs> Just like that, shockingly, Vegeta begins swaying his blade at super speed in all directions cutting through the air like nothing was in the way of his blade, all the while smiling as he does it and commenting, Now, that's what I like to call cutting to the chase. <laughs> Vegito! 
as honestly, in one of the most shocking scenes, we then see the angel corn now brutally sliced up straight through in all directions. His face and body looking like a jigsaw puzzle and each and every part of him slowly separating midair like ice cubes in water. <laughs> Sorry maybe this wasn't painless, but it'll be quick at least. Goodbye, Angel. As Vegeta with that demonic smile places two fingers on his head and begins to instant transmission away. Suddenly appearing before the pieces of corn that have now separated, covering one arm behind him in a scene that can only call back to his own son, Trunks. <laughs> Ultra Vegeta holds nothing back. A smile never leaving his face as he fires a massive beam of energy once again infused with destruction power, erasing every last cell of corn from existence, including the angel staff. Now not only do only 10 gods remain, but only 10 angels too. As the charred ashes of corn fall to the ground in front of Ultra Vegito, he can only comment to think I used to exist in a universe where these weaklings ran rampant, whose rules I had to abide to. Never again. And with that, he lands effortlessly on the ground, still while the ashes of his latest victim fall on top of him, before... TAKE ME TO THE NEXT GOD NOW! And just like that, Ultra Vegito commands the staff and vanishes to the next god of destruction awaiting their inevitable death. But that was it for today's video guys and if you made it this far leave me a hashtag next god in the comments down below and let me know who you think the next god of destruction to die will be. But until next video guys, cheers.